she's flatlining on him. But there's still everything to play for as the speed date proper now begins. The men and women meet for exactly three minutes, after which the men move on to the next table. Please move round. Please remember to reset your dials. Afterwards, these forms will be handed in, and the participants will find out if any of their offers have been reciprocated. It's a hit and miss approach to finding love. But sparks of attraction are soon flying. So, what's your name? AJ. Simon. Nice to meet you, AJ. So, uh, tell me about yourself. Beth was given high scores on first impressions. But in the three minute conversations, she takes a very business like approach. So, why are you single? Why am I single? Am I going to get to ask you anything? Yeah. Okay. If you can get me to shut up, you can ask me. Right, okay. Fire in the well, question. So why are you here? Why are you here? Well, I'm over 30 and I'm single, and so oh. my biological clock is ticking. Right. And, um... So you're yeah, here I don't know. I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate. The cracks are showing already there. He's so good waiting. So what brings you to speed dating? Uh, oh, it's a long story. We've got three minutes, so shorten it. Shorten my long yeah, story. Condense your story. So how come you sleep so low at speed dating? Do you know What's why? What's your problem? Look, you're a good-looking bloke. You're young. No, no. Slow down a little bit. <laughs> well, she grills them, doesn't she? <laughs> it's clear that some people are better at speed dating than others, and knowing how to flirt certainly helps. Yeah, can you do pastries and stuff? Of course. How about massages? Always. Got massages? Uh, yes. Okay, let's say I'm having a really tough day at work. Okay. So I come rolling into the door and... You want to know? What happens? I would be naked. Okay, good start. Okay. <laughs> well, it's easy to see what her appeal <laughs> to, to men might be. <laughs> Members of the London Seduction Society are using a confrontational strategy. Okay. So you appear not ever to have a boyfriend just because you can't keep them, or...? No, I just don't appear to like anyone, really. Oh, you're a fussy one. Have you tried girls? Yeah. We understand the game a bit better in the sense that we know that there is about ten guys that just before us just said exactly the same thing as you were talking about their jobs and everything. So I was a bit teasing about my job and when they started asking about it. You were? An ass model. Oh, OK. Yes, an ass model, I guess. Few That's people a good talent, that. I think. You think? Yeah. And that, that put them a bit on the edge. So it was a good thing to see them qualify themselves and, and trying to, oh, my God, I need to impress a bit this guy. It certainly does look as though their strategy is to try and put down the woman, lower her self-esteem relative to them so that they will come across looking big, impressive and dominant. But, in fact, the real key to seduction is to make the other person feel good. Not, that's, that's not to the, diminish them. Yeah, that's the point. I thought you looked really friendly. I thought you were yeah. really open and friendly. And oh, thanks. Think, and I felt that like a really cute mouth ones up. Thanks, Pete. That is really nice. That is so cool. After a disastrous set of first impressions, Peter's personality is making all the difference. Ask me three. Genre. Rock. Right. And Chili Peppers are Foo Fighters. Crucial question. Foo Fighters. fighters. Really? Oh, I can't oh, that's stand it. the <laughs> up, buddy? Oh, <laughs> but can he impress his one scientific match, who scored him zero in the silent encounters? Very hard to recover from first impressions, so he's got an uphill grind. Uh, well, basically, I'm a university lecturer. Uh, university lecturer? Yeah. Wow, in what? In politics. Oh, my and God, got... respect! Oh, no. <laughs> respect. It's not all rock and roll, you know. No, it's respect. It's politics. Okay, so he pulled it back a little bit there. Uh, she enjoyed the, the prestige of his occupation and uh, not turned off by his politics yet. Anyway, his status impressed him. You're great, you are. <laughs> but I wonder what she did with that dial. Oh, I forgot to swim in Oh, right. <laughs> the speed date has nearly run its course. Beth has been unimpressed with almost all of her suitors. And the feeling is mutual. At last, she meets Dave, the one man the scientists think is compatible with her. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Beth. Oh, I'm Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> so tell me about you. Right, how old like are you? You're far too young for me. How old are you? I'm 31. Oh, you? God, you look so young. How old are you? I'm older than you. Of course you are. But not <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Only joking. Excuse me. Uh, you don't make jokes like that. <laughs> Hello, a little bit of action here. He's yes. actually turning up on her. <laughs> How, how old are you then? Don't ask a lady that. 32. 32? Oops, so uh, uh-oh. She's put her <laughs> foot wrong and she's plunged in his estimation, yes. according to the perception analyzer. Uh, I want to get off this age thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> what do you do? Um, I am a director of a software company. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. There you go. <laughs> Dave originally gave Beth 60. Now he turns the dial down, and so does she. The men and women retire to their respective bars, and the data processing team springs into action. OK, woman 1035. 23, date. 38, friend. 53, friend. In a few minutes, everyone will find out who has date matches, who has friendship matches, and who has nothing. Peter has adopted a carpet bombing strategy. I think I take nearly every box, basically, just to increase my chances. Um, but I'm the type of person I kind of like people when I meet them, so I think that's desperation, basically. <laughs> Meanwhile, the women are comparing notes. He was, um, he was very stylish. He was wearing a jacket and the um, events manager. Yeah, he was gorgeous. He was an arse. He knew it. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling, he was an arse. Yes. The matches have been counted and the results are in. It's the moment of truth for all concerned. Hello, guys, this is your mutual matches. Hey. Everyone receives an envelope containing photographs of successful date matches. Or news that they don't have any. <laughs> Beth made an offer on just one man. But unfortunately, he's chosen someone else. Fair I liked him. Ooh, there's something I got him. <laughs> Has Peter's strategy been any more successful? Result? <laughs> she was lovely, yeah. Yeah, I liked her a lot. I can't remember her name, which is hideous, mm, but, um, but she was at Tracy. <laughs> I bet everyone's got Tracy, though. That's why. <laughs> yeah, he's got Tracy, he's got Tracy. <laughs> We've all got the, not the same <laughs> women. Clearly, for two of the girls, carpet bombing has worked. But it's AJ who's the winner with a total of ten dates. Oh, well, never mind. Share and share alike. <laughs> um, my tip is to um, listen to guys and compliment them, because there's always something good about a guy, normally. There's always something. Oh, yeah. Bollocks to that. Why three minutes? You've got three minutes. That's all we've got. Three oh, minutes. Don't give them a break. You have to give them something for no, three minutes. They should kiss off. Fuck the <laughs> feet. So, how successful were the three members of the London Seduction Society? Hi. The last guy that I saw, I seriously have a pathological hatred for him. Never in a million years would I go out with him. I wouldn't care if he put me as a zero on his rating. If me and him were the last people alive, there is no way I would go there. The guy is a chauvinist arsehole who loves himself. Nice to meet you. Have their techniques worked on anyone? I didn't take many girls, I suppose. That's uh, already started, like, a bit of a problem. So, you know, you already reduced your number of matches. Um, it would be interesting to see how many... Girls and all tick me at the end of the day. Man 2013. Emir received one offer of a date. He was the only one of the seducers to have done so. <laughs> well, their results are pathetic out of about 60 encounters. They get about one offer, and that's no great surprise the way they're uh, messing about there. But it's the moment of reckoning for the scientists themselves. <laughs> Peter has been handed an envelope, identifying his predicted match. And the winner is... Oh, and she was my favourite as well, that one. <laughs> but she picked everybody, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Grammer thought that facial similarity would predict sexual attraction. Sarah was Peter's best match facially and for personality. Now we have reciprocation. <laughs> so we're really on to something. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. 
I thought he seemed a really, really nice guy, but I don't think I was initially attracted to him. And for me, I need to have physical attraction to be with someone. This reaction was shared by all of the couples who were informed of their face match. You might possibly think he was your brother. Yeah. It'd be quite <coughs> weird for you to date him. I don't want him. to date my brother, that's the you thing. You don't want to date him. No. no, you can do better than that. Yeah, and I see you with a tall, dark guy. Yes. Okay. In the beginning, we thought on the basis that... Uh, People who are married are looking alike that sameness or likeness would predict sexual attraction. This was uh, uh, apparently not the case in the data. Actually, the other, uh, the opposite came around, that dissimilar people uh, make the dates together. So, uh, so we have to revise our theory. This facial prediction has failed spectacularly. <laughs> but first impressions were decisive. The perception analyzers show that men and women who decided to date had made up their minds within seconds. Come on. Grapple with it. With few exceptions, the three-minute conversation made no difference at all. Clearly, looks are all important. But it's not the face, it's the body that counts. In terms of physical attractiveness, there were two very important physical factors that made all the difference. They were different for men than for women. For men, the factor that blew all the others out of the water was waist-to-hip ratio. Waist-to-hip ratio is the size of the waist in relation to the hips and is a reliable indicator of fertility. Well, let's go for the curvaceous. curvaceous. On the software, the men had created women with hourglass figures a caricature of the female form. And at the speed date, women whose figures most closely resembled this ideal got the most offers of dates. So how much did male physique matter to women? So this is his muscle. To about there, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, quite a lot. To about there? Yeah. The women also went to considerable lengths to specify their ideal body types. It's a little bit smaller. Or oh, actually, no, a bit bigger. That's nice. So. Happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Okay. He's nice. Right. And this is what they found optimally attractive. But at the speed date, there was no relationship between this figure and the body shapes of the most popular men. For women, that was height. Women wanted 